Throughout my career, I have helped hundreds of business owners navigate complex tax situations, and in this video, I'm going to reveal my advanced tax strategies that are designed to help you significantly reduce your tax burden starting this year. This is going to happen to you without having to be a tax expert yourself, without having to stress about making costly mistakes, or even worse, missing out on deductions that could save your business thousands of dollars. As a certified public accountant, I've seen firsthand how the right tax strategies can transform a business's financial health. These aren't just theories, they are battle-tested methods that have saved my clients millions in taxes over the years. And today, I'm gonna to break them down for you in simple, actionable items. Hi, I'm Mike Jezoshek, and I'm a registered CPA. For years, my firm and I have helped people just like you optimize their tax strategy so that they can save more of their hard-earned money. The strategies I'm going to share with you today are the exact strategies we use to save Alex over $75,000 over five years by taking advantage of simple strategies available to anyone making $5,000 or more a year in profit. They are also the strategies that we use to save Jack over $82,500 over five years, utilizing a handful of easy to understand strategies. We were even able to use them to save Nicole over $225,000 utilizing advanced charitable strategies. My promise to you today is if you watch this video in full, you'll understand this set of advanced tax strategies that will transform your business's financial health, allowing you to reduce your tax liability, increase your profits, and operate with total peace of mind. And I'm going to deliver all this to you, plus more, in the next 20 minutes. So if you don't have 20 minutes to invest in mastering these strategies, then I guess significantly boosting your business's bottom line isn't a priority for you anyway. Before we dive into these advanced tax strategies, let me explain the three main reasons why business owners typically struggle to minimize their tax burden effectively. Understanding these will give us context for the rest of our discussion. Reason number one, business owners are often uncertain about where to start. Many entrepreneurs are simply not confident about how to take the first right step in complex tax planning. Reason number two, business owners are overwhelmed by all the intricacies at play. You know, which business structure is most tax efficient? How do I maximize deductions without raising red flags? What retirement plans offer the best tax advantages? And so many other factors that need to be considered to build a comprehensive and reliable tax strategy. And finally, reason number three, business owners tend to spend too long trying to figure it out all by themselves, only to realize that without professional guidance, they are likely leaving money on the table and potentially exposing themselves to unnecessary risks. I'm going to put myself out there and say, you, like many other business owners, are watching this video because you relate to one or more of the following concerns. You're worried about whether you're paying more in taxes than you legally need to. You're concerned about missing out on deductions or credits that could significantly impact your bottom line. Or you're aware of how complex the tax code can be and have concerns about staying compliant while maximizing your savings. And look, I get it. At my firm Taxum, we see this every day. These advanced tax strategies might seem complex, but that's because they are powerful tools that go beyond basic deductions. If you're ready to hear about these, you are in the right place. By the end of this guide, you're going to understand several advanced tax strategies, including the secret about benefiting on taxes from your personal residence, ways that you can get a business deduction for moving money from your business to you without paying any taxes on it, how to see six digit plus in tax savings, how to grow your wealth through real estate investment while also minimizing your taxes, and how to move taxes from your high tax bracket to a 0% tax bracket. Now, what we're not going to be covering isn't basic write-offs that the standard business owners already know, you know, simple entity formation advice or generic tips about keeping good records. Those basics are important, but they're just scratching the surface. We are here to dive into strategies that can potentially save you tens of thousands in taxes that are easy to follow and understand no matter what your level of, ex of knowledge is. So let's get into it. The first strategy I want to talk about today is the 14-day home rental rule, or the Augusta rule. And this is really for small business owners that have a separate physical entity, that they are, and they're also utilizing their home infrequently, less than 14 days, for business purpose. Now, this is separate from a home office. So think of things like maybe you're hosting a retreat for your business at your house, or maybe you're having clients over or team members staying over, or maybe you're hosting or doing something in a different part of your house, separate from your home office, that is just infrequent, one-off type things. And that's where the home office or the 14-day home rental rule works. And basically how the strategy works is that the IRS says if you rent your, your house, your personal residence, for 14 days or less, you do not have to pay 
taxes on that income that you received from that 14-day home rental. Now, you also don't get expenses from that from that 14-day home rental, but you don't pay taxes on that income that we received from it. And so we flip the switch and say, how can we rent our home to our business for business-related items, and how can we get a business deduction and, due to the tax code, have to pay no income taxes on that? So this is a strong opportunity to get a business deduction and pay no taxes on that money that we're receiving for that. Now, the piece here is correct implementation because there's a lot of people that take the strategy and abuse it. They say, well, I'm just going to rent my, my house for 14 days, quotation marks, and I'm just going to rent out my house for 14 days, $1,000 a day, and move on, and that's it. They're not having any documentation. They're not having any proof. There's nothing to back it up about it. So we need to make sure that we're doing this strategy correctly. We need to make sure we're dotting our I's and crossing our T's and documenting the business purpose and everything that's wrong with it. And so this is a strategy that I see so many business owners miss out on. It's also a strategy that I see abused. And so the key thing is, is we want it today, let you understand what is the strategy? How do we do it? But also making sure that we do not abuse it. Because if we abuse it, well, then we're taking a strategy that is in the tax code, clear and written, and making it illegal because we're abusing the strategy. So how do we do it? Some of the required items to implement the strategy is you need to have an actual rental reason. So are you renting this house? Do you have maybe team members that instead of putting, up, putting them up in a hotel, you're going to have them at your house? Or do you have clients that instead of putting them up at a hotel, you're going to have them at your house? Are you maybe hosting a retreat or maybe a marketing presentation that you're bringing everybody to your house? Are you maybe doing, a, you know, what I've done in the past is I've done a summit, a digital summit, but I did it in a different room in my house because I wanted a good backdrop and all these lighting and different things that we brought in for it. That was a reason for me to utilize the strategy. So we need to have a legitimate rental reason to be renting our house to our business. And we want to keep documentation, proof of that rental reason. The next piece is we need to find out a reasonable rental rate. So we can't say, well, we're just going to rent out our house for $1,000 a day instead of putting a team member up in a hotel. That doesn't make sense. But let's look in the local area. How much does it cost to have a, to, to rent out, uh, to have a, what is the typical uh, hotel rate for a, for a night stay? Well, maybe that's our reasonable rental rate. If you're having a board meeting at your house, which we recommend business owners have board meetings on a regular basis, whether it's monthly, quarterly, annually, something like that. But if you're having a board meeting at your house, how much would it cost to rent out a boardroom at a local co-working space or a local hotel? Let's find that rate and back up the proof, and that's the rate that we use. So we need to have a rental reason, and we need to have a reasonable rate that matches that rental reason. The next thing we want to do is we want to execute a lease agreement. So a lease agreement between our business and our personal reference about what is that lease for. We need to make a payment from for the lease from the business to us personally. At the end of the year, we need to process a 1099 for that rent that we paid from our business, 1099 from our business to our personal. We're going to zero that out on the personal tax return because remember, because of the tax code, if it's if the personal residence was rented out for 14 days or less, we do not pay taxes on that. So even though we're showing that as income from that 1099, we're going to zero it out on our personal tax return due to the tax code. And we want to make sure that we have all of this documentation on file. This can be a super powerful strategy. Now let's go through a use case where we often see this and where a lot of people do this is they'll hold monthly board meetings for their business. So they'll bring in people that are on their board. That might be family members that's close advisors to them, might be friends, might be people that are close to their business and are part of their board, their board of advisors or their board of directors. And they might host an annual, a monthly board meeting. And let's say they called around in a local co-working space that a boardroom is going to cost $500 per day. And so they say, well, okay, we're going to rent out, we're going to document the proof of that local rate, and we're going to rent out, we're going to do a monthly board meeting at our house, and the rate's going to be $500 a day. We're going to put all the documentation, the meeting minutes, all that's going to be on file. And if we did that, $500 a day for 12, mo- for 12 days, which is one day per month, that's a total of $6,000. That's the power behind it. That's $6,000 business deduction. And that's $6,000 that you're not paying taxes on when it comes through to you personally. So that's the power of the 14-day home rental rule or the Augusta rule. Strategy two we want to talk about is setting up an accountable plan. And this is specifically for S-Corp owners or C-Corp owners. And basically, an accountable plan is a way to reimburse yourself for business-related items that you paid for personally. Now, what we're always going to say is if it's a business-related item, just pay for it out of the business, of course. But sometimes... There's a business and personal mix. So there's items that are both 
personal mix and they have a business use to them. So we'd say run that, pay for that personally, but then have the business reimburse you for that. Of course, if you accidentally make a business expense on your personal account, you can use an accountable plan for this. But it's important to have an accountable plan set up because if you don't set it up correctly, that payment from the business to you could be taxable income. If you don't have the proper setup in, that payment can be taxable income to you. And so the most, you know, the, the, the most typical areas that we see an accountable plan come into place is home office deduction. Obviously, so many business owners should be taking advantage of the home office deduction, and it is available to many more business owners than, than many think. But a home office is something that you're paying for personally. You know, this house that you're in, the utilities, that's a lot of personal use in there as well. There's just a business portion of it. And so we're going to pay for that house, those mortgage and all those different things personally, but then we need to reimburse ourselves from the business for the business use, for that home office use is going to be a reimbursement from the business to us personally. In order to successfully do that, to ensure that the business gets deduction and it's tax-free to us, we need to have a properly set up accountable plan in place. And so any S-Corp, if you're set up as an S-Corporation, which so many business owners are or should be, you need to have an accountable plan set up to make sure that this reimbursement, the IRS cannot come in and make it taxable. So how do you do that? First, we need to adopt a written reimbursement policy or a written accountable plan. It's something we set the parameters on. What are we reimbursing? How frequently are we reimbursing? Set all the parameters on that. Sign it. Put it in our corporate documents. We're not sending this to the IRS. We're not doing anything like that, but we want to have it on file in case the IRS ever came knocking. The next piece to it is that we want an accountable plan template or an expense report that indicates what is the business reimbursing us for. If it's the home office, we want to show how are we calculating that. If it's personal use of an automobile, we want to show how are we calculating that. If it's a cell phone, internet, utility, all, all these different things, we need to have an expense report or an accountable plan template that shows what that reimbursement amount is coming from. And then finally, we need to make that reimbursement. We need to make the payment from the business account to our personal account. And again, if we set this up correctly, we have the expense report correctly done, it's a business expense and it's not taxable income to us. Let's go through a use case. We had one of our clients that we talked about, Alex, had an automobile that he owned personally, but he was using a lot for his business. He had a home office that he was using a lot for his business. He had cell phone that was mostly business, internet that was a lot of business use for it. And he was thinking, I'll just take these deductions on there without an accountable plan in place. But the problem is, is the IRS could come knocking and say, hey, you don't have a properly set up accountable plan in place. And that means that those reimbursements that you're making to yourself are taxable income. Sure, you get a business deduction, but it's taxable income to you. But if we properly put accountable plan in place and we properly make the reimbursements, now that business expense, that, that payment that we're making for that reimbursement for that automobile, that home office, that cell phone, that internet, it's a business deduction and it's not taxable income to us. And so in Alex's case, we saved over $4,500 taking advantage of the accountable plan as well as the expenses inside of it, that automobile, home office, and so many different other opportunities. This is a strategy that every single S corporation owner should be utilizing. Strategy number three is advanced strategies for high income earners. So who is this for? Typically, what we put into that high income earner bracket is those with household income of $350,000 or more. Now, that could be from W-2 income, business income, or a combination of the two. But if you have income in that $350,000 or more, that's where we start to look into advanced tax strategies. And now there's a lot of different areas that we can get into it. And these advanced tax strategies tend to bring with them some more risk. But let's look at one. Let's look at a leveraged charitable strategy. Now, there's a lot of different opportunities here, but in a very easy to understand way, let me explain to you how this works. Let's say that you bought uh, a stock for $100. You bought it four years ago, a stock for $100. You paid $100. You purchased the stock, and now today it's worth $500. Well, the IRS code says if you contribute that stock to charity, you can get a deduction for its value today, its fair market value today. So even though you only paid $100 for the stock, if it's now worth $500 and you donate that stock to charity, you're going to get a charitable deduction for $500, not what you paid for it as $100. And so that's this idea of a leveraged charitable strategy. Now, again, there's different ways that we can do that in different types of products and, 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 and uses for that, but that is one strategy that we like to utilize for high income earners. Other times it might be an investment. You're making an investment in maybe a business, 
or maybe equipment and uh, equipment rental, and you're getting big depreciation up front that can be used to offset some of your other income. Or maybe it's an investment in a solar project, and you're using solar credits and various different activities to offset your income. Again, when we look at these advanced strategies, there's a lot of different plays and a lot of different turns that we can take with it. Now, the importance or the, the important piece when we talk about advanced strategies is correct implementation. Because as you know, this provides some massive tax savings. And anytime you have a strategy that provides massive tax savings, it can bring about it abuse. And so whenever you're trying to implement an advanced tax strategy, we need to make sure that we're working with a vendor, an investment provider, whatever it might be, that we know, like, and trust. That we believe they're dotting their I's and crossing their T's. That they're doing everything possible to ensure that this thing is risk-free from an audit standpoint. And if it did go to audit, that it can be defended and taken to court with it. And so that is part of what we do at TaxOut. We connect with these partners. We do our due diligence so we can bring what we believe are vetted, trusted opportunities to you. Now, my opinion on these advanced tax strategies is yes, they do bring with it some risk to them because the IRS is targeting things that save massive points of taxes. But if we say, our theory is, is that if we can defend this, if we can find the tax code that this makes sense for and that we can defend, we can feel comfortable doing it but it does bring with it some risk. So how do we do this? How do we get into advanced tax strategies? First, we need to find a trusted vendor, whether it's an investment, whether it's a a, a leveraged charitable deduction, whether it's an investment in solar, whether it's an investment in oil and gas, whether it's an investment in equipment or some other type of business, we need to find a vendor or a product that we know, like, and trust, and that we know are doing things the right way. You know, a use case on this is we're just working with a client of ours or a member of TaxElm that combined both a leveraged charitable strategy as well as a business investment, and they saw in year one over $250,000 in tax savings. That's how powerful the strategy can be, again, if we're doing it correctly, if we're dotting our I's and crossing our T's on the strategy. Strategy number four is this idea of a short-term rental, or more specifically, the short-term rental loophole. And who is this for? This is for business owners or individuals that are looking for a tax deduction, but also interested in investing in real estate. And basically how a short-term rental loophole works is there is a code in the IRS code that says if you rent your, if you, if you have a rental property and the average stay is seven days or less, the IRS is not going to look at that rental property as a passive activity. And to give you an idea, typically passive activities, if we have losses from passive activities, we can't utilize those losses to offset ordinary income, W-2 income, business income. But if we can turn those passive activities into non-passive, then if they create a loss, then we can utilize them to offset our W-2 income our business income. And so this is the power with the short-term rentals, the typical rental property. If you're investing in a long-term rental, typically that's going to be a passive activity. And so if it's creating losses due to depreciation in early years, you can't use utilize those losses to offset your ordinary income. But if it qualifies as a short-term rental, you can. And what qualifies as a short-term rental? The average rental period has to be seven days or less. Now, it doesn't mean you can't have a rental period over seven days. It just means the average total stays divided by total days rent has to be an average of seven days or less. Now, there is not only a tax opportunity here, a tax play, but there's also a real wealth building opportunity available for this. Now, this is another thing that we want to be important of because there's risks associated with this. You could invest in a, what we call a lemon property or a property that is not successful. Or maybe you invest in a property that you want to do a short-term rental with, but its location doesn't even allow short-term rentals. So you need to make sure that you're dotting your I's and crossing your T's on your investment, the properties that you're choosing. But my belief is that this is not only a short-term rental, but real estate in general can be an extremely powerful strategy that not only helps you build your wealth, but can give you extreme tax benefits on the front end. So how do we do this? How do we implement a strategy like this? First, we need to find a property. So we need to find out, okay, where do we want this property to be? How do we want to invest in it? What's that going to look like? You know, how much are we putting down? How much are we taking a loan out? Doing all those different things. Once we find that property, we need to start putting it into practice. We need to start renting out that property. And we need to ensure that our average rental day for the year is seven days or less. 
Once we've accomplished that, we can utilize a cost segregation study that's going to help us accelerate a lot of the depreciation from the purchase of that building. It's going to accelerate it up into year one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So we're going to take a lot of that depreciation that normally would be spread out over 39 years, and we're going to bring it all in on the heavy end or a good portion of it in on the heavy end, and that's going to create a loss in that entity. Then we can utilize that loss from that short-term rental to offset our ordinary income, our W-2 income, our business income. Again, this can be an extremely powerful strategy to help offset some of your income. Finally, strategy five. And this strategy is hiring your children. So who is this for? Typically, we say those that have children between the ages of around seven and 18. And how this works is that you can get a business deduction and your kids potentially pay no income taxes on that. So let's say you hire your kids in your business and the kids are doing work for your business. We need to, we'll talk about this in a little bit, but they need to be doing actual work and doing all these different items. But we can hire our kids in our business and if we're paying them out of a sole proprietorship or a single member LLC, we can pay them out of our business. We don't have to withhold for FICA taxes, Social Security, Medicare. And if their income is under the standard deduction, they pay no income taxes on this. So this is an opportunity where we can pay our kids get a business deduction, reduce our taxable income on our high tax bracket, and that income goes to them and they potentially pay no income taxes on that at a 0% bracket. Imagine if you're in the 37% tax bracket, you go from 37% tax bracket, that money that you're paying your kids, down to zero. Now, if you don't implement this, you're losing out on these opportunities because guess what? I'm a parent. I know you, if you're a parent, you are spending money on your kids every single day. You're sending them to basketball camps, baseball camps, amusement parks with friends. You're doing all these extracurricular spending on your kids. But how can we find a way to get a business deduction for it and move money from our tax bracket to our kids' tax bracket? Now, of course, there are some risks with this and there's abuse. Your kids have to actually be doing work for you. So if you're like, oh yeah, I'm just going to pay my kids. I'm going to pay them up to the standard deduction and take full advantage of this. We need to make sure that we're doing this correctly. We need to make sure our kids are actually doing work for us. We're paying them a rate that's relative to those types of things. And so my belief is that nearly you can find a way to pay your kids. Now, you might not be able to max it out. You might not be able to pay the full amount that you want to. But I believe that every business should be able to hire their kid. Every business should be able to hire their kids some way within their business. Now, it might be, you know, doing social media. It might be shredding paper. It might be cleaning the office. It might be stuffing envelopes. There might be all different types of activities. But I think that you should be able to hire your kid in some way within your business. So how do you do this? First, we typically say the kid should be at least seven years old. And we say that because that's what tax case has supported. Now, we see some people do less. Some people, you know, have, have valid reasons. You just need to dot your eyes, especially careful with that. Now, so typically we say kid has to be at least seven years old. The work that they're doing within your business has to be directly related to your business. So they have to be doing actual work for your business. We can't just say, oh yeah, we're going to pay our kids for our chores and that just helps us work more on our business because they're doing chores instead of bothering us when we're working our business. No, 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 no. That doesn't work. They need to be doing actual work for your business and we need, to be, we need to be paying them a reasonable wage based on what they're doing for our business. So we need to be paying them a wage based on what they're doing that's reasonable. We can't just say, we're going to pay our kid $13,000 a year and move on. No, we need to find out, okay, what are they doing? How much time are they putting in? What is a reasonable rate to pay for someone doing that? And you also need to take into consideration their experience. So if our kid's cutting lawn in our office, we're not going to pay them the same amount that we'd pay a professional to do it because they're 10 years old and maybe they don't have that full experience. Or if our kid's doing social media, we're not going to pay them as much as we'd pay a social media firm that is experts in this. So we pay them a reasonable rate based on the work they're doing, the hours they're putting in, as well as their experience. Then we want to keep a timesheet. What are they doing? When are they doing it that matches up with our payments to them? Finally, we need to pay our child by check or direct deposit or something directly into an account in our child's name. And we need to make sure that we don't use this money for parental obligations. So we can't take this money and say, hey, now go buy us food, go buy us groceries, go pay us rent to stay with us. We can't be doing things like that. But parental obligations would not be sending someone to a baseball camp, sending somebody to an amusement park for their friends. So there's lots of opportunities and different planning cases in this. We also talk about using a Roth and various different cool things for this. So let's go for a use case, a client that we've actually seen implement this. And again, we recommend and say that majority of businesses should be able to, if you have kids in that range, should be able to find something to at least start to scratch the surface on the strategy. But we had a client that had age, kids age 14 and 16, 
he paid them each around $12,000 per year. Now, it wasn't exactly twelve, dollars but based on the work they were doing and everything else within the business, it was around $12,000 a year, and that brought them savings of over $9,000. Again, this is an opportunity to move money from a, get a business deduction for it, and your kids potentially pay no income taxes on that money that they received. So with that being said, most of the basic tax software programs out there won't give you this level of sophisticated tax planning. So if at any point you would like some help understanding how to implement any of these advanced tax strategies, click the link in the description to purchase Tax Elm and get unlimited access to tax experts through our Tax Elm software. So far, we have covered advanced tax strategies that will allow you to Rent your home and pay no taxes on the income from it. Properly reimburse yourself so that you get a business expense and you pay no income taxes on that money that you receive for it. We've talked about implementing advanced tax strategies that could save you over six digits in tax savings. We talked about investing in a short-term rental property while utilizing cost segregation to create losses that can offset your W-2 income and your business income. And we also talked about strategies on how to move money from your high tax bracket to a 0% tax bracket. All of this together is going to allow you to run your business with confidence, knowing that you are keeping more of your hard-earned money. These strategies can take you from being an anxious and overwhelmed business owner to one who walks around with confidence and a sense of control, knowing that you have proactively taken the right steps to optimize your tax situation. So now you have two choices. You can keep going down the path you're currently on where you are worried about overpaying taxes and missing out on crucial deductions or concerned about the impact taxes on your might make on your business's cash flow and growth potential, or maybe scared and anxious about potential audits or compliance issues, or maybe insecure about how changing tax laws might affect your business, or you can act now to ensure that you are implementing these strategies correctly and efficiently, maximizing them in your business. But to be honest, the truth is tax planning for businesses is not just about understanding these strategies, it's about applying them correctly, consistently, and tailoring each one of these strategies to your specific situation. Now here's what I know. Even if I had five hours with you together, instead of the short time we shared today, it's going to be hard, almost impossible to teach and implement these strategies into your business in a way that is going to give you full to the full extent of benefit of all that I could give you. No matter who you watch and how, how many hours watching videos is not going to truly guarantee you the tax savings you want and deserve. You need more than that. Well, what I have given you today is incredibly valuable. Frankly, it is the tip of the iceberg. And if you have loved what I've shared with you so far, you'll love what else I have for you next. It is with great pleasure that I introduce you to the Tax Elm software. Tax Elm is a software specifically designed to help business owners like you pay less taxes every year while growing your business and your wealth. It is here to take you by the hand and guide you step by step towards saving you the most money in your taxes as humanly possible. It was designed with people like you in mind. Now I could sit here and explain the main benefits and features of Tax Elm that have helped people like Alex, who was a new business owner doing $100,000 a year. With Tax Elm, he was able to alter his business entity and gain the confidence to set up multiple write-offs in his businesses, leading to saving him over $15,000 in taxes in just the first year. Or maybe Jack, who was a more established business owner, making $180,000 a year. He was able to use the strategies and assistance provided to him in Tax Elm to save over $16,500 in taxes each and every year. But if I sat here and went through all those benefits and features, then the video would simply go on for another 30 minutes and just simply be too long. So what I have done is generated a completely free private video on my YouTube channel. The video is not public or available anywhere else on the internet. In this video, I run through exactly what Tax Elm is, how it works, and how it is currently saving business owners like you tens of thousands of dollars every single year. So if you're interested in learning more about how you could save thousands of dollars on your tax bill, click the link below to access the private video.